we have y squared divided by 4 minus x squared divided by 9 equals 1. What we want to do is identify enough information so therefore we can sketch the graph. The first thing I would say would be the easiest to identify is the center. Right? If you guys look at your standard form of the equation, you see the center is your hk, right? Well, obviously, we're not subtracting anything, so 0, 0 is very easy to come by. One of the major mistakes is identifying your a squared and your b squared. Right? Previously, for an ellipse, b a squared would have been 9. However, since we're subtracting the two expressions, this is a hyperbola. And if you guys look at your formulas, it's a squared to the minus the b squared. So in this case, a squared is 4, b squared is 9. So therefore, a is 2, b is 3. Right? OK, so now it's a little differences so far. Um, if we know if we're going to find our foci, we need to find c. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Basic difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you look at your notes from the two ellipses, like you'll see the, those differences. What if it's like a plus and negative x squared? Then it's a net. The plus and the minus is still the okay. subtracting, right? Yeah. So yeah, you're right. If I did this, it's hyperbola. Also, to note, just real quick, what if I did this? Yeah. Wait. Then you would swap them around, and a squared would be your not. Like this, you would just rewrite it as a subtraction problem the other way. I'm not going to be that nice, but I'm not going to be that mean. But just a little FYI, I mean, we could rearrange things and try to trick you like that. Um, all right, so let's see. Our a is 4. b is going to be 9 equals c squared. So therefore, 13 equals c squared. So c is equal to the square root of 13. All right, that's basically all the information I need to kind of sketch the graph, right? I mean, there's really nothing else. So we go ahead and. Just create a nice little axis. My center is at 0, 0. I'm going to label that. Before I start sketching, though, I want to be able to determine where is my transverse axis. So the transverse axis is where the vertices and foci lie. Well, since my a squared is under my y, that means I'm going to have a vertical transverse axis. So it's like the graph I have up there, but just rotated vertically. What is the transverse y? Transverse axis is the axis where the foci and the vertices lie on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that means from the center. To find my vertices, I need to go up 4 and down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. One vertice and 1, 2, 3, 4. The other vertice, right? And I can plot those points as saying the vertices are going to be at, um, basically, you're taking the center and you're adding and subtracting 4 to it. Right? You're taking the h, I'm sorry, that's wrong. You're taking the y coordinate and you're adding and subtracting 4 to it. Now, we don't really need, we can simplify these answers as 0, 4 and 0, negative 4. OK? The next thing is we want to find the foci. Wait, what? what? You're going too fast. 0, 4, 1, the a. Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. That's 2, Great. isn't it? <laughs> That's not going too fast. That's just I'm making a mistake. Make sure you tell me. So yes, you're right. a is the distance from your center to your vertices, right? The transverse axis is vertical, so I'm going to go up two points, thank you, to go to my vertices, and then down two points, right? So my vertices is basically the y coordinate of my center plus or minus 2, which technically would just be written as 0, 2 and 0, negative 2. OK, we're good with there. Yeah, that's because a is under the y, right? Correct. Wait, a is on a squared is under the y, okay, so, so it's a vertical a transverse axis. Vertices. A is the distance from the center to your vertices, just like an ellipse. So why can't we just put plus or minus? Two? You can. I was just showing you because we're going to do one where the center is not the zero, so just kind of showing it. The next one is going to be your foci. Um, so. Foci is going to be a value of c, which is square root of 13. And some people get really confused with 13 because they're like, ah, where do I graph? Yes. No, those are. So how do I graph square root of 13? Well, guys, again, you're not going to have to graph for your exam. But let's just kind of do a little estimation. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. So the square root of 13 is going to be between 3 and 4. What? No. Don't don't one, don't two, don't three, between 3 and 4. And I'm just going to estimate it, guys. One, two, three, somewhere between there. All right. Now, 
the co-vertices are not really on the graph. If you guys look at that, you guys can see the co-vertices are not really on the graph. However, um, I'm going to use the co-vertices because I want to show you guys a way that can help us kind of graph, um, a way that can help us uh, graph our asymptotes. So um, if I wanted to find the co-vertices, that's, oh, let's write in the foci, sorry. So that's going to be 0 comma plus or minus square root of 13. So the co-vertices are now going left and right a distance of 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So your co-vertices are going to be um, 3 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0. Wait, how did you get that? They, the co-vertices have a distance of b, which in this case is 3. So the last thing that we could ask on hyperbolas is the asymptotes. And again, guys, all you're simply doing is taking the equation of the asymptote, which in this case is for a vertical is going to be y equals plus or minus a over b times x minus h plus k. So to graph y equals a over b, we're just going to take 3 over 2 times x, because h and k are both 0 and 0, right? Now, is 3 halves x really that difficult to graph? I thought it was 2 thirds. Would it be a over b? It is a over b. Two. Oh, it's 2 thirds. Thank you. Now, is 2 thirds really that difficult to graph? No. no, you had to pass algebra 1, and you had to know how to do that right before getting here. So 2 thirds, you're just going up 2 over 3. And, or you could go down through over 3. So that is the asymptote. Now, again, it's plus or minus. I'm sorry. Plus or minus there. So you could go up 2 to the left 3, down 2 to the right 3. And these are your two asymptotes. OK? So. Your asymptotes is plus or minus a over b, because h and k are both 0. So this is just rise over run. Up 2 over 3. So then do you only have one? Oh. You have two of them, because it's plus or minus. You're doing positive slope and negative slope. So now I have my vertices, I have my foci, and I have my asymptotes. So now I can go ahead and just sketch my graph. Now again, do you guys need to know how to graph? Not really, but you do need to know how to identify the foci and the vertices as well as the asymptotes. The trick that I want to show you guys is because sometimes graphing the asymptotes might not be as easy. So one thing you guys can do is if you guys create vertical lines and horizontal lines with the vertices and the co-vertices, what you guys see is that the corners of that box you just created is where the asymptotes go through. So the asymptotes intersect at the center and they also cross these horizontal and vertical lines that, the, that make up the vertical. We'll do an example like this, because I'm not, not all the equations are going to be that easy to graph, so I'll show you guys how to do it on a more difficult example. Yeah, because okay? that one was easy. That one was easy. 